Good job, Casey. Good throw. Like many fathers, Sean Miller loves coaching his children's sports teams, but he's not like most coaches. Good job. Good throw. The outgoing good and job. active husband and father of three is a walking miracle. His body bears the scars of a horrific accident that few people could survive. Good job. He was only 28 when a common outdoor activity brought him into contact with overhead power lines, sending 7,200 volts of electricity through his body. The electricity left my body in 27 spots, um, blood at the top of my head, um, my left arm, uh, my hand, my, an area just below my elbow and right at my elbow. Um, my right hand out of all four of my fingers, blew out my chest. His mother found him unconscious. I went running over. And he was really, really badly burned. And his chest was smoking. His chest was really smoking. Sean had to be revived twice during the ambulance ride to the hospital, and again after he arrived. His large extended family soon gathered in the emergency room. They wrapped him all up and they let us in. All about 35 or 40 of us were in there. And I thought that was really strange, but maybe it was because it was a small community hospital. They just were being kind. But we later found out they let families do that when they don't anticipate that the person in there is going to live. Everybody was standing around him and I didn't get to talk to him for very long because right when I got there, they were getting ready to pull him out of the room and put him in the uh, helicopter. And she let the, the nurse let myself and the kids and everybody else watch him fly away. And it was, it was pretty emotional watching him fly away because I didn't know whether I was going to see him again after that. The doctors gave me little to no chance of survival because of the severity of my condition. In an instant, his life and the lives of his loved ones had been changed forever. Sean lost his left hand, part of his right hand, and his sternum, the large bone in the center of the chest. There were 27 exit wounds, dozens of skin grafts and surgeries. It was stressful, just making sure he was, you know, trying to keep his pain down, trying to keep his spirits up. Um, again, I didn't think I just, you know, something was taking over my body and I just, you know, made sure I had to make, keep working to pay the bills, you know, everything that we could. Kayla had to almost be a, an older mom. She had to grow up a little too fast. It was a learning process, learning how to not be stubborn and ask for help when I needed it. Um, learning how I was left-handed when I got hurt. Um, so learning, teaching myself how to, to write right-handed and to feed myself right-handed and, and to do certain things that are hand-dominant. Ultimately, he defied the medical predictions and reclaimed his life. I'm blessed. Yes, yeah, I'm very, very fortunate, very lucky. Um, I shouldn't be here. There, there's no reason I'm here outside of the love of my family and God. Uh, bigger purpose is the only thing I can think of is the reason I'm still here. Part of that purpose, he believes, is to help prevent tragedies for others by sharing his experience. His accident happened while he was decorating his mother's trees with holiday lights. My strategy was to toss him up in a tree and then loop him around the tree. Um, I remember having the loop in my left hand and the lights that I was going to toss up into the tree in my right hand. Um, I had done other trees like that. She has a huge pine tree right by the front of her house. And that's how we've done that one. We'll get them up in the top and then walk them around. So that was my game plan. Do you remember tossing them up? I don't. 
It's not known whether the weight of the lights pushed branches into the lines or whether the light strand itself made contact, but the outcome is clear. It didn't even enter my mind to look out for them. I mean, I knew power lines were, were, were deadly. I just never thought I'd come in contact with them doing what I was doing. I built houses, I wired in houses, I knew, I knew electricity. I just didn't ever think about that day. We, neither of us did. We, we just, they were part of the yard. Of your landscape. Yeah. And you I just mean, become accustomed and comfortable. Mm -hmm. There's the word. You become comfortable. Very much so. That those power lines are a part of your property. Well, and as kids, we climbed in those trees. We got frisbees, balls out of them. The reality is that many outdoor activities can bring people into dangerous proximity to power lines. Removing tree branches, cleaning gutters out, anything where you're in any area of electricity, you, you've got to be aware of it. You've got to understand it and you've got to know what you're getting into. Know what your surroundings are. Educate yourself. Working with Safe Electricity's Teach, Learn, Care campaign, Miller is a powerful teacher, urging people to learn from his experience and to share life-saving information with those they love. He continues to learn as well, and while we were working together, he and his family saw a live power line demonstration sponsored by Safe Electricity. When you see a bird fly along, that bird lands on a high voltage 70 ton volt power line. Has the wire got a rubber coating over it called insulation? No, that's a bare copper or aluminum wire. When that bird wraps his little bare feet around that 70 turn hole power line, that bird is at one voltage, one wire, and not a path to ground. They learned that it's the differences in voltage from one point to another that create current flow, and that electricity is always seeking a path to ground. And they learned a surprising lesson about conductors when son Sean got to participate. For Sean's birthday, he gets a pretty cool Spider-Man balloon, some gifts. Hold on that for me, Sean. He says, oh, Kyle, cool, thanks a lot. Well, he gets home and he says, Dad, I'm going to show my neighbor buddy across the road. So Sean runs out the front door. Stay right here, Sean. As Sean rounds the corner of the house, his balloon touches the electric wires going into the corner of the house. Now, you guys... Most of my programs are inside. You can see it a lot better. It's a little darker. Did you see the electrons arcing around the outside of the balloon? Guess what our electricity does on the wires? Travels on the outside of them. They'll travel on the outside of your vehicle. You can't see the electrons on the outside of your vehicle. But Sean, the balloon that we give you is a Mylar metallic balloon. Every single one of those metal balloons has a little bitty warning label. It says, warning, this balloon conducts electricity. To avoid power outages or electric shock, do not release outdoors. Do not come in contact with energized conductors. You realize what we gave Sean was a Mylar metallic balloon. The toy store, the flower shop, attached a Mylar metal ribbon to the balloon. What do we do with that ribbon? We wrap it around a kid's wrist, we put it in their hand. What happens if they walk into the wire, path the ground? Tell you what, whether it's even a bare wire in your garage, you can create a path the ground with that metal ribbon. Don't ever put a metal ribbon on any balloon with helium whatsoever. Four and a half years after my accident, he told me things I didn't know. And I, I learned them in a 25 minute session just paying attention. Soon after, Sean met with the Safe Electricity Advisory Team. He told them that everyone should see a live power line demonstration, like the one that can be seen on safeelectricity.org. I spoke to Kyle yesterday at one of the demonstrations, told him it's sad that I learned a million times more about electricity after my accident than before my accident. And the more he learns, the greater his resolve to help others understand the consequences of contact with power lines and the importance of learning how to stay safe. It affected every aspect of my life, um, it, it financially, mentally, physically. I mean, for a long period of time, it, it affected my life. Um, I went from a very high-end job, very good pay, to, to nothing. Anything I can do to help somebody else not go through what I've been through and not have a family have to deal with what mine's had to deal with. Sean tells them that as he considers a new career direction, electrical safety education is a strong possibility. Look at us there. One of Sean's good friends. Back home, he continues to be an inspiration to those around him. His easygoing manner and ever-present sense of humor hide the pain he lives with every day. 
A good day, he says, is one in which he doesn't think about the burning sensation that has become a normal part of life. Go. And on this particular day, he shares with us a new milestone. A longtime lover of water sports, Sean gets up on a wake surf, something he previously thought wasn't possible. He continues to teach important lessons in the way he lives. It's one inning, three points. All we got to do is hit the ball. We hit the ball, we'll get them right back. Come on, be hitters. And urges people to learn from his own life-changing brush with death. People every day ask me what happened to me. Um, every time I coach sports, I'm coaching football right now. Um, just got out of coaching softball. And every time I sign, sign up for something, I'm getting four or five kids I've known for a long time and six, seven new ones that don't, they all ask me and I all always explain it to them and tell them what happened to me and, and why they've got to be careful and why they've got to understand it. And obviously you and your family learned a very hard lesson. Very quickly. It is very unforgiving. There are no second chances.